Our scripture reading today is going to come from John uh, 10, verses 7 through 10. Therefore Jesus said again, I tell you the truth, I am the gate for the sheep. All who ever came before me were thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to, to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the word of the Lord. While I'm pulling this up, I just had this thought in my head because I was, uh, as we did that last uh, hymn, which was fantastic, I noticed that Charles, our keyboard guy over there, had the piano in front of him and then the, the synthesizer on the side and was kind of working both, you know, during that hymn. And it reminded me of those old 70s progressive rock bands, you know, where the guys would have tiers of keyboards, and usually they're wearing a cape with, like, sequins on them. And so I think we ought to get Charles a cape over there, and you can... <laughs> so I was, uh, a few weeks ago, I told you guys I was taking this class called Leadership Seminal. And the first day that I went there, uh, we, we spent it uh, mostly in a conference room, and we were told that would never happen again. Uh, but the first day, they kind of have to go through some things. So we were in this conference room, and they had a lot of uh, alumni, for, people that had been through the class before, through the program before, uh, coming to help facilitate that day and speak to us about the day. And I'll tell you, as they got up there, like, I mean, they loved that program. I mean, they loved it. They thought it was the most awesome thing in the world. And so as they're talking about it, they are just hitting that hard. Every person that gets up to speak, how excited they were and how awesome it was. And it got to be, kind of reminded me of those infomercials, you know, where they're, they're, they're hitting a word over and over again, like exciting, you know. And so they're like, it's so exciting. We're so excited to be here. It's such an exciting day, you know. And I did the program two years ago, and I'm still excited, you know. And, and I'm sitting out there, and I'm thinking to myself, I'm not so excited, uh, to be here. Uh, honestly, I had the, the first day of the class that I went there, I had just got back from being out of town the evening before. And then, you know, had to get up early the next day and go to that class. And I knew I had been out of the office for more than a week. I knew I had a ton of stuff here waiting for me, you know, emails and phone calls and all this type of stuff that I had to do. And I was thinking about all that stuff that I had to do. And I was kind of thinking to myself, I really wish I didn't have to be here today. And so then, Finally, another guy gets up who's an alumni, and he gets up and he says, I'm a little different than all these people that you've been hearing about so far. And he says, uh, you see, when I first came to this class, he says, I, I didn't really want to be here. And he said, uh, uh, the first day, uh, he said, my company kind of made me go. And he said, when I got here the first day, all I could think about was all the things I had to do and wasn't able to do because I was sitting here in this class. And he said, and so maybe you're one of those people today. And I was thinking to myself, ah, now this guy, this guy gets it, you know. But he went on to say, like, but that changed. He said, as I went through the program, it ended up being great. I learned a lot. I had a fun time. It was a, a tremendous experience. And yes, he was still excited, you know. And true enough, it ended up being that way for me as well. I mean, you've already heard, I've already been telling stories about it, uh, the second day in the ropes course and all of that. It, it's been a lot of fun so far. But I wonder, and I think, like, here's something that it was a, it's a great opportunity that I was able to go and that this guy was able to go. It ended up being a good experience so far for me and through the whole thing for him. Why is it that he and I had such a difficult time kind of letting go of all the things uh, that were stressing us and the burdens that we had and the stuff we felt we had to do, we, we struggled to let go of that and just appreciate the opportunity we've been given and to just enjoy the experience that we were having. I think I'm not alone in that when it comes to uh, enjoying things in life and appreciating things in life. I think a lot of times we struggle to let go of all the stuff we feel we should be doing instead. You know, and all the burdens that we feel and all the problems and obstacles that we have in our life that we feel we need to overcome. I want you to think about that for a minute because today we are talking about live, love, learn. Now, if you have not heard of live, love, learn before here at Holy Cross, let me 
tell you a little bit about what it is. Uh, it, it's not a cliche, right? It sounds like that, what's the one people are always putting on Facebook? Uh, like, live, love, laugh, I think, is that one, right? So it's not, it's not a cliche like that or, or something that has become a cliche. Live, love, learn, here, it's a little different. Those are the words we have chosen to describe what the life of a disciple is. So a disciple of Jesus Christ, a disciple is a follower. So someone that follows Jesus Christ. We believe if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you are going to have these uh, ideals of live, love, learn in your life. Um, This is what they mean. So each one has an explanation. And so to live life as a follower of Jesus, as a disciple of Jesus, means that you live life as both a gift and a calling from God, right? To love as a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ means that we both receive the love of God and then give it away and share it with others. And to learn as a disciple or a follower of Jesus Christ means that we both learn and then share and teach the Word of God with others. And so the idea behind it is that the life of a disciple, the life of a follower of Jesus Christ, is not something that just happens on Sunday morning. It is not something that just happens when you are doing uh, so-called church activities. But you will be living, loving, and learning in every aspect of your life. At church, yes. At church activities, yes. But also at home with your family. Also when you're out with your friends. Also when you're at your jobs or your hobbies or the other things that you do in your life. In all of those things, in all of those times, in all of those places, you are living, loving, and learning as a disciple of Jesus Christ. And I want you to notice something about those things as we explain them. Did you notice that each one has two components? Uh, Something you receive and something you give or do. Each one starts with something that we receive. Life is a gift. Uh, We receive love from God. We learn from his word. Each one starts as something we receive because that's how it always starts. Because the entire basis of our relationship with God through Jesus Christ is based on what he has first done for us. We would not even be able to approach him and have a relationship with him if he had not first called us. If he had not first chosen us. Jesus famously quipped once, uh, you did not choose me, I chose you. And the Bible says other things too. It says things like, we love because he first loved us. And so everything about being a follower of Jesus Christ begins with what God has done for us. He is the one that has reached out for us. He is the one that has granted us his spirit. He is the one that has granted us forgiveness. He is the one that sent his son, Jesus. He has done it all for us. And we acknowledge that in the live, love, learn approach to life. That it all starts with him. But also notice that we don't just stop there. All the gifts that God has to give us, he doesn't give them to us so that we can take them and put them on a shelf in our closet and not do anything with them. He gives us gifts in our life, be it life or love or learning from his word, so that we can use them, so that we can exercise them on his behalf, so that we can share those gifts with others. So we don't just take our life and go, yeah, that's great, thanks, but we share that life with others. Uh, We don't just receive his love and go, oh, that's fantastic, I'm loved. But we love one another. 
We don't just learn from God's word and go, hey, that's great, I know everything now. But we share that learning with others. That is what it means to live, love, and learn as a disciple of Jesus Christ. But today, we are focusing on live. And in particular, we are focusing on the first half of that equation, if you can call it that, of living life as a gift. Next week, we're going to look at living life as a calling and what that means. But today, I want to talk about living life as a gift. Now, I think the idea of a gift has meaning to us because we are a society that loves uh, to both give and receive gifts. I mean, we have dozens and dozens of occasions on which we give and receive gifts, and it seems like they grow exponentially every year. I mean, when I was a kid, I remember you got gifts like on your birthday and Christmas, and that was it. Right? I mean, you got candy at Halloween and Easter, but you didn't really get gifts. But now that's changing. Now kids get gifts on Easter. Uh, now there's anniversaries and baby showers and wedding showers. And, you know, there's uh, all these, you know, I call the uh, greeting card holidays. You know, I mean, there's Valentine's Day and, you know, Secretary's Day and like all these things, right? We love to give and receive gifts. And so this is the idea I want you to think about when we think about the gift of life. Um, When we receive gifts, and I think like if you look back, especially at your childhood, there were usually two people that were sort of polar opposites. Everybody usually had in their family someone that gave horrible gifts and someone that gave good gifts. And like the person that gave horrible gifts, it doesn't mean they were a bad person or that they didn't love you or you didn't love them. They just didn't know how to buy good gifts. My brother-in-law is one of these people. (laughs) I remember a few Christmases ago. uh, I I tell you what, I almost can't tell this story with a straight face. It is a true story, though. (laughs) A few years ago for Christmas, uh, his wife got him some gift. To be honest, I don't remember what it was, but it was a nice gift. I mean, maybe nothing spectacular, but it was nice. It was something he was interested in, and it was, you know, kind of pricey. And she had got him something nice for Christmas. And he had gotten her a clock. (laughs) Now, I know you might be thinking, well, I mean, a clock can be nice, right? I mean, some of those table, you know, the ones that are like under glass, you can see all the works inside, and they're brass, and they're, they're expensive, you know? That's not the type of clock that he got her. Do you know the type of clock that he got her? He got her one of those kitty cat clocks. You know, with the tail at the bottom and the two eyes that, like, go like this? That was his one and only gift for his wife that Christmas. And we have never let him live that down since. (laughs) That is not what we are talking about, because I'll tell you, God doesn't give you gifts like that. I mean, unless you like them. Matthew chapter 7 says, If you then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? See, God is more like that one person that was in your life that you always knew gave you awesome gifts. I mean, whether they were expensive or not, you knew that person gave you the coolest gifts. And I want you to think about and remember what that was like as a kid. You know, when whoever it was, like grandma or whoever it was, you know, and they would come and you knew they were bringing you a present. And the excitement that you would feel over that. And when they gave you the present, what did you do? I mean, you didn't wait to open it. I mean, you were on it in seconds, like, and you weren't, like, carefully unwrapping it and saving the paper. I mean, you ripped it open because it was that good. And then when you saw what it was and how awesome it was, I mean, you pulled it right out of the box. And 30 seconds later, you were playing with it already. You were using it already, whatever it was. That 
is the gift that God gives us in life. And that is how God wants us to view the gift of life that he gives us. He wants us to relish it. He wants us to rip into it and play with it and use it. God has given us a wonderful gift in life. He has given us everything that we need. He's given us our physical life, our spiritual life, the whole thing. Revelation chapter 4 says, For you created all things, and by your will they were created and have their being. He created us. He gave us our bodies and our lives. But he didn't just stop there. Because he redeemed us, too, and gave us the promise of eternal life. We all know that famous verse, John 3.16, still relevant today. For God so loved the world, he sent his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. He gives us that promise of life eternal. He gives it to us as a gift to be appreciated and to be relished. Sometimes that's not how we view life, though. We don't always see it as a gift. In fact, sometimes we get so caught up in the things that are going on in our life, in either our little comfort zone, our little sort of box that we live in, or in all the things that we have to do or the burdens that we feel, that instead of viewing life as a gift, we view it rather as a series of obstacles that have to be overcome. Uh, Yesterday, my daughter McKenna did her first surf competition. And so we had to drive up to uh, Daytona Beach. We had to be there by 8.30 which meant we had to leave our house about 7.30, which meant we had to get up at about 6.30. And uh, it was a fun time. We had a great time. I got to spend time with my family. I also surf a little bit, so I got to do some of that. Sounds like a fun day, right? When my wife reminded me Friday night that we had to do that, what was the thought I had? Was it, oh, great, that's going to be exciting. We're going to spend a fun day at the beach. Is that what I thought? No. No. I thought, I'm going to have to get up at 6.30 on a Saturday. My one day to sleep in and I can't do it now. I'm putting roadblocks up. And, you know, kind of ridiculous ones at that. Instead of viewing that as a gift, as a great day that I got to spend with my family and have fun, all I saw was the obstacle I was going to have to overcome, which was waking up early. Now, I don't want to minimize that. That's kind of a silly example. It's easy to pick on. I know that some of you uh, may be going through some real and legitimate struggles in your life. Um, You may be struggling with uh, an illness or a failed relationship or who knows what. And that that can be painful. You know, that can hurt. but you still need to see life as a gift. Because those obstacles, uh, those problems, those struggles that you have, that you may feel like you need to overcome, you need to realize that through the power of Jesus Christ, through the promise that God has given us, they already have been overcome. And if you're dealing with them now, it's only for the moment. And that ultimately, in your life, in who you are, and where your life is headed, those struggles, those obstacles have no relevance. They have no power over you. You have been set free from them through Jesus Christ. You see, God doesn't want us to just exist. He didn't give us life just so that we could be, so that we could limp along, so that we could muddle through, so that we could get by. That's not the life that God wants you to have. 
the, the verse that Daniel read, the, the passage, the last verse of that, John chapter 10, verse 10, is what provides the foundation for our view of live in Live, Love, Learn. And to read it again, it says, and this is Jesus talking, he says, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you may have life and have it to the full. God doesn't just want you to exist. He wants you to have life to the full. He wants your life to be jam-packed with goodness and joy and meaning and purpose. You know what it reminds me of? I'll tell you. It reminds me of when you've got a really good beer that you're going to drink. And if you don't drink alcohol, you can substitute any beverage that you like. My daughter loves ices, you know. But I'll go with beer. And so you've got a really good beer that you like, and you've got it in the bottle, and you've got your pint glass right there. And you're pouring it into the glass. And you're getting every last drop out of that bottle because it's good. You don't want to waste any. And it fills up almost to the top of the glass, and it's so rich and tasty looking, you know? And then what happens, right? The, it starts to foam, right? Gets a little, they call it a head on there. And, and it starts to build up, and maybe it starts to overflow. And as it starts to overflow, and it's looking so delicious, what do you do? Yeah, that's right. You grab it, and you, you take a sip, because you don't want to waste any or spill any. That's the life that God wants you to have. He wants you to have a life that is so full that you've got to grab hold of it and start drinking it right away. He wants you to find joy in it, in living your life, in doing the things that you love. This is why the L teams that we have, the, the small groups that we have, we have live teams which are simply things that people enjoy doing. Uh, like Ultimate Frisbee. Or uh, like we used to have one, it's, it's, it's on hiatus right now, but we used to have one called the Urban Fishing Club, where guys who like to fish would get together and fish. And it wasn't a bait and switch either. It wasn't like, hey, we really like to fish, come fish with us. And then when you showed up, they went, but first, we're going to study the Bible. It was just guys that loved fishing, getting together and fishing because they were appreciating the things in life that God had given them. I took part in a discussion once online, kind of a chat thing, you know, where somebody asked the question, um, what is it that you do that no matter what type of day you've had or, or uh, um, you know, how bad your day has been or anything like that, that it always makes you feel better because you love doing it so much? Think about that for a second in your own life. I'll tell you, as I was thinking about it, now, you're thinking, all right, he's a pastor, so I probably said, like, prayer. And I will tell you, prayer obviously has power and makes you feel better if you're having a bad day and you come before God in prayer. But that's not what I thought of. I thought of the two things that I love to do most. And I talk about them all the time. You guys could probably name them. Sailing. And? Judo. judo. That's right. Sailing and judo. And I'll tell you why I felt that way about those things. Because when I am doing those things, I forget about everything else. I mean, it doesn't matter if I'm stressed out about something. Uh, I mean, it doesn't matter if I like, just had a fight with my wife. Never happens, you know. But if it did, it wouldn't matter. Because when I'm out there and I'm sailing and I'm working the sails and I'm feeling the wind and I'm feeling the boat, I'm not thinking about anything else. I'm just loving it. You know, and when I'm, I'm wrestling a guy in judo, and I mean, I'm so focused usually on not getting my butt kicked, you know, and I'm using every muscle in my body, I, I am not thinking about anything else. Everything else goes away. And I just love life. That's what God wants for us. Life is a gift. He wants us to love it. 
He wants us to find joy in it. That surfing competition, my daughter, she didn't want to go, you know. She was nervous about it. She's actually a pretty decent surfer. But so we made her go, you know. You know how it is as parents. We made her go. And, of course, once she got out there and started surfing, she had a great time. And uh, beforehand, the thing we kept telling her was the guy that was running the, the competition kept telling the kids, because it's made for, you know, beginners and stuff, that the, the main objective was to have fun. And the person who was truly the winner of the day was the person that had the most fun. And so we kept telling her that, and we finally, you know, a little arm twisting, got her out there, and sure enough, she had fun. And she ended up taking fifth place out of like 10 kids. So, yeah, I thought that was pretty decent, you know? So afterwards, she gets a little trophy, and I'm high-fiving her and telling her how great I think she did. And um, she, uh, she said, uh, I kind of hoped I was going to get third, you know? And, uh, and I said, oh, I said, that's okay. I said, fifth place is great. I go, plus, you didn't, we didn't even really know what the judging criteria was. You know, we didn't know what we were lo- they were even looking for. And she corrects me, and she goes, Oh, yes, we did, Daddy. She goes, the criteria was to have fun. That's our judging criteria as well when it comes to living life as a gift. God wants us to have fun. He wants us to rejoice. He wants us to love the gift that he has given us. And it is a great gift. So tear into it. And live it. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.